we just woke up, it's about 6 a.m. It's been very cold during the night. So cold that my socks froze where they were hanging. Frozen socks for brekkie. That's pleasant, isn't it? That was a cold morning. According to my trusty watch here, it was minus five degrees in the tent that morning, but was I cold? No, I was quite warm and had been all night. Now, if there's one thing I've learned over the years in all my hikes, is that it is no fun at all being cold and uncomfortable on a hiking trip. It's actually downright miserable. Miserable. Mouser here, and do you want to know the secret to staying warm and dry in even the coldest and wettest conditions? Well, in this video, I'm going to take you through my layering system that ensures I'm warm, dry, and comfortable no matter what the weather. And it's one that I've developed over years of trial and error and trying different products. This system has kept me warm and dry in some of the coldest and wettest conditions. And I'm confident that if you use it and you tailor it to your own needs, it'll work for you too. Let's get into it. Now, a good layering system is crucial for comfort when you are out in the wilderness or anywhere for that matter. Now, just think about it. When you're out walking around the city, going for a stroll, you might start off on a t-shirt, then the wind comes in, you get a bit of a chill, you put a jumper on, you put a nice hoodie on. Then you might even put a jacket on after that. This is layering at its simplest. Layering allows you to regulate your body temperature and your comfort levels. In the wilderness, understanding your layering system and its limits ensures that you carry only what you need as well as protecting you from the elements. Now when we're hiking, depending on who you talk to, a layering system can consist of sort of three to four layers. You've got your base layer, your mid layer, some add in another layer here called the insulation third layer, which I'm a fan of. And then the fourth layer that I use is my shell layer, my outer shell, my raincoat that protects me from the rain and the elements. Four layers, that's what I use, some use three. I am a bit of a cold boy, so I like that third insulation layer. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through each of the layers now. First layer, the base layer. For my base layer, I have been using the Patagonia Thermal Weight Thermals, thermals for around six or seven years, and they are still going strong. They come on every single trip. They're a great product, I love them. Now Patagonia describes them as this. They are breathable, lofted base layers that keep you warm in cold conditions. The Polartec Power Grid fabric has HEIQ pure odor control, which minimizes odors, odors. Minimizes those stinky odors, and I have to agree with that. Minimizes is the key word. The odor control additive, this HEIQ stuff, it is a silver salt based odor control additive. Patagonia use wicking chemistry to help move moisture away from the skin. And this wicking chemistry allows sweat and moisture to move quickly and rapidly away from the skin, thereby preventing you from getting cool. A lot of synthetic clothing has this wicking sort of characteristic now. And like I said, I've been using these particular thermals for six years and they're still going strong. Another good option is wool or merino. <coughs> These days is very popular and I have used the icebreaker thermals. I just find they're a little bit heavier, but I do occasionally take a second thermal top on those really cold trips. And if I do, it's generally an icebreaker. Wool is a great product, love it. I've got lots of wool stuff. The only downside is it is a bit harder to wash. Wool often ends up with the other stuff. And as long as I'm doing all my stuff, most of the time on a cold cycle, it doesn't tend to affect the wool too much. So that is a bit of a downside for wool, but these days not as much of an issue. If you're like me and you are harder on your gear, then I think things like a polypro fabric like those Patagonia Capilene sort of products are the way to go because they tend, I think, to be a bit harder wearing. And just looking at my own thermals, six years in, they've got another six years in them at least. And when you're buying thermals, I do recommend spending a little bit extra and getting something good that's gonna last a long time. There are cheaper options for sure and they do you do get a good life out of them still, but like I said, these Patagonia ones, six years, going strong. And those ones, when I bought them, they're not overly expensive, pretty affordable, I think. The Capilene Thermal, I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's gonna go a few years yet. Sure, there's some little bits of abrasion, there's some fluffing and stuff going on there. It's got the thumb loops to keep it out, especially handy when you are putting on your next layer. That's good. I've got the zip neck. I like the zip neck. Now it allows me to regulate the airflow, so I'll often wear this walking while I'm out on the track. I'll have this on when I leave camp in the morning. It's just better than a t-shirt when it's a bit cool. Then I can take it off, put the t-shirt on once I am warmed up. Great product, love the Capilene Thermals, highly recommend. Next layer is your mid layer. My mid layer generally consists of just a fleece top and I prefer a fleece hoodie. Which hoodie? This one, the Patagonia R1 Half Zip Hoodie. I'm a big fan of the Patagonia R series fleece jackets and hoodies and half zip tops. They're a good product. I still take this on every trip. This, along with my thermal underneath, along with my insulating layer, I've had them all on under my raincoat on those really big days and stayed warm the whole day. And boy, did I need it on a particularly one day. This also has the hoodie, so that can come on. And 
what is good about this one is it zips up like that and gives you like a balaclava effect which i love too when, on those really cold days it's, it's very lightweight put the weight there this comes on pretty much every single trip with me even day walks it's there all the time again good quality product that's going strong got it on special if you can't get this same one anything in the r series for patagonia i find really good an r1 level is a lightweight thinner layer but i find it works well when you're using it with a thermal also good in those cold days where i just need a bit of added warmth around camp and sometimes when i'm heading out from camp i might just have a light t-shirt on and put this on over the top where i can just take this off once i get going it's a really good temperature regulator when i don't want to have the thermal out all the time so yeah that's my mid layer that's my fleece the other option is the full zip jacket with no hoodie this is another Patagonia R1, very similar to that last one. It's just the full neck and it's got no hoodie. Weighs around the same. I think it's about 50 grams lighter. Put the weight there. But this is just one of the older R1 jackets. Full zip. This one has two hand pockets, whereas the other one, the yellow one, only has a chest pocket. That is an advantage of this. This one doesn't come that much these days just because I love the other one. They would generally be first three layers. But in Tasmania, no matter what time of year, I always like to take my third layer, which is my insulating layer. And you can often replace this fleece layer, this, uh, this second sort of thermal layer with your insulating layer. So you might just have a thermal, a insulating layer and an outer layer. You can sort of mix and match, but I take all four. That brings us to the insulation or the mid layer, which I've talked about before. Check the video out down below if you haven't seen it or just up here about the jackets I use, the insulating jackets I use. Well, that's where this layer comes in. This is my insulation layer and this one I use, which I spoke about in that video, is the Arc'teryx Nuclei Jacket. It's a new addition, but I love it. And it's come on a trip already, a big trip, and I find it really warm and a fantastic insulating layer. It's almost like a bit of a soft shell as well in that it does repel a bit of water. You can wear it in some light drizzle. I wouldn't do it for too long, but even if it does get wet, it keeps you warm. So it's a great insulating layer to have. Basically anything that can trap air is an insulating layer. Examples include down, this synthetic jacket. Another option, if you're not in the market for spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on down jackets and synthetic jackets, you get a thicker fleece. Just get a nice thicker fleece. I started my days out for 15 years, nearly 20 years, just wearing a really thick polar fleece jacket as my insulating layer. You can pick up a decent fleece at most outdoor stores, at the big budget outdoor stores, at secondhand shops and variety stores. You can find something to fit your budget because they're such a common style jacket to wear these days. Now down and synthetic, I've spoken about it before again on those previous videos. I prefer synthetic these days because I like to be able to walk in it if I can. With down in Tasmania where it's wet all the time, down is pretty bad. When down gets wet, it doesn't work anymore. When synthetic, gets wet it still works so that's why I tend to go for that I also find when I'm a bit more active as well I can wear this on the track and I don't sweat too much in it and it breathes a bit better than my down jackets would the thing with down is it is a bit more expensive so an option like this is quite a bit cheaper than an equivalent sort of down jacket it will have a bit more weight but not much these days what I wear on the bottom half I tend to take the same thermals as my top and that in terms of pants I take my thermal pants as my base layer I have taken the Montbell down pants they're good but again in the wet weather conditions in Tasmania, just not suited. So as my second sort of insulating layer for my pants, I take the Montane Prism pants. They've come on many trips with me in the last four years and still going strong and they pack down very small and are very light. I could also wear them on the track if I had to. They've got a bit of a water repellency to them. They're synthetic, so being wet isn't an issue. Most of the time I am walking in shorts with nothing else other than the shorts on. If it's a really cold day, like it was a few years ago in the spires, I did start out a couple of days wearing thermal pants with overpants on the top. And then finally for my outer layer, my outer shell, which we've spoken about on a previous video, check that out below. It's this layer. It's my outer shell layer, the Beta AR jacket, which I did talk about in that previous video, so check that video out. But it is my outer shell, and I can wear this over the top of all those other layers, so I can have my thermal on, I can have that fleece on, and I can have my insulating jacket on if I really need to, and have this on over the top, and I feel comfortable and fine. This is a great jacket, I've talked about it. I'm not gonna go over all that again in this video, but check that other video out if you wanna know about this jacket. On the pants down below for my outer shell, I generally use the Arc'teryx Beta AR pants. I have tried many overpants over the years. I used to hate wearing overpants, but in Tasmania, when you're in the scrub, you really need to have some good pants that are going to live up to the rigors of Tasmanian scrub if you are in that environment. While the Beta AR pants here match this jacket very nicely, even the same color, one big issue I do have with them is that the zip 
on the leg only goes up so far and as a result you've got to take your boots off to put these pants on and when you're in deep scrub in the rain in the bad weather you don't want to have to take your boots off to put your pants on so that is a big pitfall of these pants arcteryx if you're listening please make a longer zip on them you do it on your other pants do it on these ones they're a great pant other than that they are a bit heavier but that's the price you pay when you are getting a hardcore scrub defender pant going on the inside of the leg they've got these very abrasion resistant sort of panels there that'll last a long time those pants they will be good i used to love the arcteryx zeta sl pants but i went through two pairs in two years the way to wreck a pair of 300 dollars pants i loved them they were super comfortable super light but obviously went up to the rigors of the tasmanian scrub the patagonia torrent shell pants which i now take as my lighter pair on a longer trip these ones here the patagonia torrent shell pants these are pretty durable very happy with them, worn them on a couple of trips. They will come on future trips. I'll take those beta AR ones on those super rigorous trips, but the Patagonia Torrent Shells, you can put them on with your boots on. And at the moment they're winning the race to be in my pack because of that fact that you can put them on with your boots on. Summing up, we've got our thermal layer. We've got our fleece thermal slash second thermal layer. We've got our insulating layer in the nuclei jacket, and then we've got our outer layer in these. And then on the pants, we've got the same thermals. We've got the Montane Prism pants, and then we've got the over pants to go over the top. And when you combine all this together on those really windy cold days, you have a system that works really well and that will keep you protected from anything but the absolute most extreme weather conditions like Antarctica or something where you have to go to another level again. And with this layering system, the beauty of it is you don't have to wear them sequentially like I've gone through. You don't have to start with your base layer, then put the, you can wear them sort of as you see fit. So even on those hot days, I'll often just have a t-shirt on with this raincoat on over the top for when I'm bashing through the scrub. On a hot day, when I've got to put my overpants on and this on, I will just have my underwear on underneath this because I'll be quite warm. This outer layer will provide me protection against the scrub and I can still be quite comfortable underneath because I've basically got nothing on, just this layer. But then on the cold days, I can adjust my layers as I see fit underneath. I'll be taking them on, taking them off as I'm walking to make sure I'm not sweating too much, that I'm not uncomfortable and that I am just right all the time. That is the key to layering, is knowing to when to put them on and take them off. Don't walk for 20 minutes feeling uncomfortable, thinking, oh, so I'll, I'll take it off at the next stop. Stop, take it off now, get it done, and you'll be much more thankful of it. It's taken me years to learn that, but I'm so glad now that I stop when I need to, to change the layers. That is my two bobs worth. Hope you enjoyed the video. Just hit that like button down below, hit subscribe, sign up to the video. We're putting one out a week at the moment. We've got a lot in the pipeline and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. See you then.